Hello, everybody. Welcome to Your Capital, What's Up? I'm Chuck Weger, your area state senator. Thank you very much for watching. Today, I'm very pleased to have with us Gary Bastian, Judge, Ramsey County District Court, former mayor of Maplewood, and many other prestigious titles. Welcome to our show, Gary. Thanks, Senator. Thanks for having me. At your honor, but I'm going to call you Gary. Gary and okay. Chuck would be okay with me. Okay. And we've known each other, viewers, for approximately four decades. You would yeah. never know that looking at us. We're, but we're, we, are, we are that old. <laughs> at least <laughs> I am. I don't know about Chuck. But Gary, we're, we're, we're going to talk about being a judge, but you know, first, how about just sharing uh, where you grew up and that journey that has been so eclectic, I would say, with yeah. all the various talents and interests that you've had. You're a Renaissance person, but uh, where'd you grow up first? Well, I uh, was living in St. Paul with my folks, and then in about fourth grade, I moved out to Maplewood. What, what school did you go to uh, in St. Paul? In St. Paul, I went to uh, St. Luke's on Summit. Okay. We moved to Maplewood, and they put me into St. Peter. Okay. After two months in Maplewood Junior High, my family moved down to Iowa, okay. Okay. 11 months in Cedar Rapids, mm -hmm. and then about three years in Des Moines. Okay. So I went to high school at Des Moines Roosevelt. Any, any particular memory at uh, Maplewood Middle School or St. Peter? No. I was, you know, Were you I a was, good student? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Were you interested in art? Uh, at that point, yeah, I, you know, I would putz around with color crayons and paints. Uh, okay. I did a... Uh, we know you still do watercolors today, yep. and spoiler alert, and then you do bronze sculpting. But I do that too. Okay. But I would, you know, we would do things at school, and you know, I, I wasn't uh, a, a great student. Math was always pretty tough for me. Okay. And then... Uh, so what my, were you good at? Uh, athletics. Okay. What was your favorite? I liked geography. I liked earth sciences, biologies. Okay. I should have been gone into medicine, but I couldn't do the math piece. So, okay. Uh, so, so then I uh, then I went to athletics. River Falls. What did you like most for athletics? I did football. Okay. I played in the, uh, I think it's now defunct, but it used to be the Maplewood Athletic Association. Mm -hmm. I was part of the Gladstone team. Okay. And we played the feared Parkside team because that's where all the, the wealthy families live. So they had bigger kids. You remember and your position? I was the nose tackle. Mm -hmm. on defense and I was a running back on offense. Okay. And then mid-season we moved to, to uh, River Falls, not River Falls, but uh, to uh, Cedar, for Cedar Rapids. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Des Moines and I started playing uh, football there and okay. I tore a knee Ooh, okay. my, my freshman year. So I didn't play football again, but I started running cross country Yeah. and uh, did baseball. And eventually I had to work, so I gave those up. But I, in my early life, I, I liked it. And then when I got out of college, I got into the local North St. Paul and Maplewood yeah. uh, softball. So you you graduated from high school. High school? And what, what might be the most noteworthy thing? Other, you know, you made it. But hmm. what might be, uh, if you were to you know, summarize, what would be a, a key thing as to how Gary Bastian was remembered from at his high school? And you graduate from which school? Uh, Des Moines Roosevelt. Des Moines. So. And we, so I'd say it was where a couple teachers were instrumental in igniting my interest both in biology. I had a good, great biology teacher mm -hmm. and also in art. Okay. And so from what there. Type of, what type of art? Oh, in high school you do everything. Yeah. We, I still have a, a clay sculpture, a self, a self-portrait sculpture that even the, it doesn't look like me, but it's supposed to yeah. be me. So that's where, so I went, then I went, graduated there, went okay. to River Falls, okay. and I was an art major for a year. I had a disagreement with the pottery professor. He gave me grades that I didn't think I deserved. So I quit and went to political science and sociology. I had a double major. Oh, I almost, now what if you would have had an A in uh, the pottery? <coughs> well, then I would have been a poor, struggling uh, teacher in the, in a system, or maybe I would have gone on and gotten a doctorate and yeah. taught at the college level. But so I always had the interest in art. Yeah. But I decided that I uh, and I took I took uh, education 101 at River Falls. Yes. And I did my my it wasn't really student teaching, but you had to go visit a school. Yes. And I visited North St. Paul. Yes. And I visited the art class, and the kids were throwing erasers all around. Mm -hmm. The teacher was going nuts. The kids were doing what they wanted. And I thought, I'm not going to be able to sit through a day, 
a week, a lifetime of a classroom like that. So that was the encouragement to go to something different. Okay. And I had, uh, I had, I think what I chose other than political science, I mean that I learned a lot about the 1933 presidential election that I don't think ever served me well mm -hmm. when I got into politics, but that's what we studied. So the sociology of people are looking for yeah. things to do, I'd say so, uh, yeah. social psychology, say sociology, I think prepares you to deal very well with people. It kind of yeah. gives you insights into things. So after graduating? So after graduating from uh, college, uh, I went to William Mitchell. Okay. It was a night school then, so I did four, four years of time, four years without time off for good behavior. Okay. I Are graduated. you living in Maplewood, St. Paul? Or? I'm living on the border of North St. Paul and Maplewood. I've okay. been in Maplewood uh, continuously since 1974. Okay, so yeah, during uh, Billy Mitchell. You're yep, well, Billy Mitchell. Uh, now Mitchell Law. Yeah, right? well, now, yeah, Mitchell uh, Hamlin, Hamlin Law, yeah. Right. I was, uh, my first two years I was in St. Paul, okay. living off a of grand, so. and then got married and moved into a place in uh, in Maplewood. Okay. So I, when I graduated, I was in Maplewood, okay. and I've been there since. Good. So and, you graduate, and... You did a lot of public service work, and I remember seeing you at the at the Minnesota Senate. You used to be a key research person. And I was a researcher there for 11 years for the minority caucus, the Republicans. Uh, at the same time, I had run for, and it was 1979, I ran for for office and got elected to the city council. Yes. Why? And Why did you run for council? Well, it was a, kind of a, an interesting thing. I was getting pressure to run for the House or for the Senate okay? because I worked in the, the, the caucus yes. and yep. that sometimes looked as the spawning ground sometimes. for senators or House members. And I had no desire to do it. I mean, at the time, I think you were making $17,000 and you had to spend $50,000 to, to run a campaign. Yeah. I didn't change too much. And I, I didn't <laughs> have that kind of money. And I really didn't have the desire to do what you do. I mean, I have... Yep. An utmost respect for the things that you have to do and everything you have to balance and then yeah. make decisions on. So more power to you that you do it. But I didn't think I had that. Yeah. I also thought that local government was a place where when I made a decision, it's like you and I right now, I'm looking right at you and I'm going to say, I'm going to vote against you. Yeah. At the Capitol, I'll just take up the chain first. At the county, they make decisions that may impact you, may not, yep. may not be direct. I mean, if they have raised property taxes, that could be six months off. Yep. State level, things are usually six months to a year off. And again, you pass a bill relating to electrical high voltage lines in Meeker County, mm -hmm. I'll never see that yep. unless it comes through in the way of a bill yep. to the power company. And the federal government, whatever they do, you may never see it. Yep. I mean, you don't, we don't know what they always do. But I always thought that local government, and I would include the school board in that, yep. you have to look at the people and you have to give a reason yep. why you're doing something or not doing something. Yep. And if you vote against them, you can't run into a back room yep. or you know, send your vote in and put it in the congressional record. You have to actually do yep. it in front of them. And I was serving on the school board uh, as you yep. were at local government. So yeah, when you had to was. close a school, a, a school yep. you didn't have a chance to hide. You had yep. to say, we're going to do this or not. Yeah. And that's what I liked about local government, and that's why I really never left. Yeah. Who because was your mayor uh, when you first got elected? When I first council? got elected was Johnny Graveview. John Graveview. And then uh, Johnny uh, didn't run. Norm Anderson ran. Yes. And I think within a year, Norm was uh, dead. He had open heart surgery, yeah. uh, yep. and he didn't come out of it. So that was either 90 or 91 and mm -hmm. I was mayor until I was appointed to a judgeship in November of okay. '97, and I've I've had three elections. And it was Arnie Carl uh, Governor Arnie, Arnie Carlson that appointed you to did. judge, and of course, then you have yep. won. I I don't believe you ever been opposed, have you? My first election, I was opposed. Yeah. Okay, it was someone who had worked for me when I was the commissioner of labor and industry. Yes, and I was in the work comp arena. Yes, and I was working on a bill that would have put, uh, taken all the work comp judge steps that we have, and we have 
or comp settlement conferences yes. and made them put it all into binding arbitration. Yep. So I was essentially trying to eliminate the three steps we had at the yep. time on a work comp case. Yep. And he didn't like that I was trying to eliminate his job. So when <laughs> I was up for election, he ran against me. Yeah. Well, we have that. You know, that yeah. Yep. We we get appointed, but eventually, within a within a minimum of two years, you have to stand for election. Right. And then, when you're elected, you get a six-year term. Okay. We'll go to the what it's like uh, being a district court judge. But uh, as the, the mayor of Maplewood, are, are there a couple of key things you'd like to share that might be uh, legacy matters for you? And I can think of some actually, but. What are you're you gonna see what I what I say, then you're gonna ask if I forget. I think the one that I really in, always look at because I drive through the city all the time is the open space in initiative. Yes, we that came out of one of my mayor's forums that I had on a Saturday morning. Yep. Every Sar on Saturdays, once a month was it? You yeah, come for, to Gary's first, house. First, yeah. first, either my house. Or there were times when I'd go down to the fire station yes. in the leg. I didn't want to make everyone drive up because you know we're geographically challenged yes. in Maplewood. You really have to work on making sure everyone is included. Mm -hmm. And it came out of that and they wanted us to buy land. Well, we didn't have money to buy land. Yep. We didn't even have land that was truly identified that, you know, you might have a different idea of what's valuable for open space than I would have. Yes. So we put together from that, that meeting, we put together a commission, people who applied, people had different interests, yes. and it was throughout the city. They met, they came up with a scale where they, would, they could measure every site, and I don't remember how many different categories, but they ranked all the open space that was then available, yes. one, one through 100. And then they, we had a, a general idea what it was going to cost us. Yes. And we ended up as a council deciding that uh, we could afford $5 million yep. if the residents approved the bond issue. Yes. And then the council stepped back. We said, if this is going to sell, people won't trust the city government to give them $5 million to go out and buy land that really isn't identified. Mm -hmm. So the fact that there were sites identified throughout the city. We wanted to make sure that the open space was spread throughout Maplewood and uh, the people on the commission and others mm -hmm. got behind the initiative and I believe it passed like with about 60 percent of the vote, yes. which is a very high vote. Yes. And today we have open space and the idea was that it was never going to develop. It was always going to be in some manner the original open space. Now we have different tracts of land that have different values. Mm -hmm. The old uh, plow factory on the corner of English and Frost is the one that comes to mind that used to have a manufacturing plant. Yes. We tried to bring that back to natural. Yep. When, it was, when it was in our system and we were looking at it, it was a, the, one of the last upland brush sites in the city. Now I think all the upland brush is gone yep. and they put a trail through it so people can walk through it. I, I don't know if that fit the spirit, but it's still not developed. Yeah. They put a weir system so there'll be water there. Yeah. But that's what happens. Yeah. Future councils can do whatever they decide yeah. to do. Well, it's, a, it's a great legacy yeah. and uh, your leadership uh, needs to be acknowledged. And yeah, I know you're too modest on that, but uh, many of us. And the other one was the community aware. center that's still operating. And our goal yes. was to have that self-sufficient, that whatever we brought in would run it. Yes. Now we didn't include the bond costs. So, I mean, it was, yep. you might say we were lying or we weren't actually funding the whole thing, but we knew that the operations of the community center yes. were going to have to be paid for by the users. What a great community so, asset. Thousands and thousands yeah. of people from uh, Maplewood and around have enjoyed that. And, and uh, I know it was a split vote. There were a lot of pressure. Sometimes you look ahead for the future yep. and you need to, just like on the land, acquisition, the open space, ultimately the voters deciding, but on uh, the yep. community center, uh, it was up to one vote and it needed Three leadership. Three to two vote. Yes. Yep. So, uh, well <coughs> done. Uh, Judge Bastion, Gary, uh, reflect on the years of uh, serving on the bench and, uh, you know, we, uh, you've had various assignments, it rotates in terms of what you do, but uh, reflect on what it's like to be a judge. Well. For people who are un 
decided about careers, your high school, college, I would tell you that uh, being a judge is probably the greatest job in the world. And maybe you and I'd have to end up arm wrestling because you're going to say that being a state senator, senator is the greatest job in the world. And there probably might be some others like governor or U.S. senator or whatever. But you go in and every day you get to look people in the eye. That's what I said about local government. Yes. Is that the, the, the defendant or the plaintiff and the defendant or the family is right before me. Yes. And I have to make a decision. Now, in district court is the court of record. So people come in, they talk. Everything they say is being taken down by a court reporter. Then I have to issue a decision based on whatever motion is before me. And we have three divisions, the criminal division, the civil division, and then the family and juvenile division. Yep. And I have recently just migrated out of uh, the family and juvenile back to adult criminal. And I'm going to assume, because I really have like two and a half years left, that that's where I'll retire from. But each one of them is different. The only time I will tell you that I think people are happy to see me is when they're getting married. <laughs> and I would say... You can perform the 90, ceremony. That's one thing that the legislature has allowed <laughs> us to do. I'd say 98% of the people that appear before me for weddings are happy. There are 2% that okay. <laughs> there's something going on there, but they still get married. I can't stop them. I could say I won't do it, but then they'll find someone else. And then adoptions. Those are the two things where both sides that come in are happy. Otherwise, you think about it, you go home and you, get, you run into a tree and you get sued by the owner of the tree. That's a civil case. One of you is un or both are unhappy to be in court. <laughs> if, you get, uh, if my extern who is sitting in the audience drinks and drives and gets caught, she's not going to want to be there because she got caught and is going to be a criminal. Yes. And the civil, uh, you know, and family, family motions dealing with child support, with dissolution, with custody, with termination of parental rights. People aren't at their best when they're coming in the court. Yes. So it's how they're treated. You try to treat them with respect. And I learned that from local government days. I mean, yes. we had some hearings that... Uh, People, I think, would have tarred and feathered us. But you deal with the people, you give them a chance to say what they want to say, and then you, you may decide against them. But if you give the reason why on the record, at least they know you listen to them. And the same thing with being judge. If I find someone guilty after a trial or after a hearing, I have to tell them why. And then I get to go on and figure out what to do with them. But it's, uh, it's a great job, anyone who's an attorney, uh, they should think about becoming a judicial officer. We have referees that uh, aren't elected, they're appointed. We have the judges. Then you have the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. Yes. And I've never had much interest to go, in fact, I've never had any interest to going beyond where I am yeah. because they sit in a room. They have to decide the case. The only time they see people are during the arguments. Yes. Now, you have a great website, too, you know, the court system for people that uh, you know, want to learn more about you know, the various uh, you know, divisions. If yep. you, you know, and you don't necessarily always have to have a lawyer. <coughs> uh, it's probably a good idea, but there's a, a lot of self-help instructions that are available. Would you like to just comment on, on that so that it's more uh, uh, consumer-friendly yeah. in terms of it's, one's it's awareness of the court Yep. System. It's changed a lot since I was appointed in 97. We do have a self-help center for people in the family area. Uh, we have pro se cl clinic possibilities in civil. We have the public defender's office that represents clients on the criminal side, both uh, small crimes and felonies or big crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a group called the Criminal Defense Services, Inc. that provides that niche between public defender, free representation, and going out and buying a, a regular, full-strength private mm -hmm. attorney. These people are in a nonprofit group that provides some re same representation as if they'd be paid uh, okay. a normal rate, but they do it on kind of that niche in between. Mm -hmm. They provide the service, okay. and so we don't really have a pro se clinic. I don't know if I'd encourage everyone to think they could handle their cases alone. Depends what they're charged with. You're charged with a theft, $50 candy bar from Macy's. Mm -hmm. Do you need an attorney? 
if you if you don't have income, you can have a public defender represent you. Yeah. And those people are in court every day. They know what's going on. They know how to handle a case. Yeah. A lot of people don't kind of look down on the public defender, but a lot of private attorneys are not in court every day. Yeah. They're handling the big case. They, maybe they'll be great for a trial, but your public defenders are every single day they're in court doing okay. something for their client. Okay. Now you're the district court. Uh, tell us how many judges are there, and uh, we have a suburban locations uh, you know, available. But yeah, we, we have the big picture. We have 29 seats that are authorized by the uh, legislature. Yep. Right now we have 28. Sal Rosas seats, judges. Judges. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sal just retired at the end of uh, of March, mm -hmm. and the governor has uh, some interviews to do to fill that seat. Roseanne Nathanson will be retiring at the end of May. And so if the governor gets a chance to interview, he'll have uh, those two appointments to make. Mm -hmm. but, so we have 29 people, and I think we have 12 in the criminal division. And I know we have six, going to be seven in the family division. So what we have left will be in the either doing the mental health things. We have specialty courts. We have two judges yep. that are assigned to specialty courts, which are the Veterans Court, yes. the DWI Court, the Adult Substance Abuse Court, and uh, Mental Health Court. And do you think these have been good reforms, uh, you know, specializing? Some people need more intense uh, work, and that's what these specialty courts do because yep. you're in court every week. Yep. You know, if I'm going back to our law enforcement center, people are going to be in, and they'll be, the next time they see me will be a month away. Okay. They don't have anybody looking over them. They have to regulate themselves. Well, if you have a drug problem, you go back home to your same neighborhood where you're getting in trouble, you may not have the ability to say no. Yeah. So when you're in one of the specialty courts, you're coming in the court, there's a team of people working for you. Yeah. Immediate consequences. Where in my system, uh, if someone would plead guilty today to a felony, I would be sentencing them on June 7th. So there is some delay, you, okay. you know, with your kids. Yeah. If they do something, you don't wait two weeks to, to whack right. them on the rear end for yeah. the, the milk they spilt yeah. on uh, March 1st. It right. Does, doesn't do much good. Yeah. And as a judge, you've also been very active you know, through the Bar Association or you know, the foundation and giving back. I'd like to you know, comment on some of those additional activities that you aren't required to do, but you do them because of who you are. I'd, I like to get involved in the community, so I've been involved in our disproportionate minority confinement piece. We had JDAI, which went out in the community. There's a meeting this coming week uh, on the east side. So if I find out about a community meeting, I like to go and just mm -hmm. listen to what's going on, get a sense of what we're doing, if it's doing any good out in the community. Uh, the Bar Association, I think you have to give back, so I'm an extern. Uh, mentor type people, type person for mm -hmm. law students, or you didn't have to be a law student. I've had uh, high school and college people come through. Yes, I never lost my love for the art, and you mentioned it earlier. Yes, I do bronze sculpture. I study out at the Minnetonka Center for the Arts that has a bronze foundry out there, so you can do everything on sculpture. I paint out of my living room. I take local classes from watercolor, watercolor, yeah. and I donate some of my art every year mm -hmm. to the Barfo Foundation that yes. helps do other things in the community. Well, good. And family, yeah, I know the, the kids are raised, but yep. I'd like to you know, just comment on being a dad. Well, I can't say that I, I've said already that being a judge is the greatest job I've had. The most rewarding thing was, has been a father and watching the, the kids grow up. I wouldn't call it a job that would do s disservice to every father and mother out there. But to see your kids grow, uh, Alex uh, lives in San Francisco with his wife. He'll be soon moving to Philadelphia. Christopher is, uh, as I was telling you before, sold body parts for a while, hips, knees, joints, that sort of thing. Now he's uh, doing he, a skin this product. This was for a, a company. A company, oh, yes, yep. Okay. Not on the black market. Yes, okay. uh, my older son, Alex, I used to tell people that he sold drugs. Well, he worked for Pfizer, so it's my sense of humor. But watching them and all their friends and people that you know as the kids grow up, it's rewarding to see kids that don't come before me. Juvenile court, I did that for seven and a half years. And you hope that you can spark something 
in at least one kid every day that makes it a turnaround moment where they don't keep continuing doing things, using drugs, getting in fights, running away. You hope you get at least one kid a day. Yeah. If you don't, you're going to see them again. Maybe you can be that spark. Right. Excellent words. And uh, Judge Bastian Gary, thank you so much for your public service uh, throughout the years, for landing here in uh, our part of the woods and uh, making a huge difference in the quality of life that we enjoy. Well, thank, thank you, you very for much. Joining us. Thank you for your work. Thanks. And viewers, if you have a question of uh, Judge Bastian, uh, he's very accessible. In fact, I have found uh, the publicly listed number in the court chambers. You call that and uh, he's, he answers the phone <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and he will get back if he's uh, not available. He is in court as well. And uh, if you have questions of myself, please give me a call. My cell phone is 651 seven seven zero zero two three or at the capital six five one two nine six six eight two zero let me put a plug in because yeah, judge, we have honored. the maplewood courthouse it's open to the public anytime you want to go see judge geary or judge judy or anybody on the local level you can you can come down to the courthouse downtown it's a beautiful art deco building so you'll get to see art but you can sit through uh, cases down there so don't be bashful, and if you're a local resident, come up and knock on my door, and we'll search you and let you in. Thank you very much, Judge Thanks, Bastian, John. and thank you, viewers, for watching. So one of these days, you're going to... Uh,